Hello. Yeah. Satan. Oh, okay. Yeah. How are you? You want me to go in that building to pick up your trail? All right. I'll go in now. I feel compelled to obey. I'm under the spell of Alistair Crowley, famous black magic ball guy, the Beast 666. He's entering me now, making me repeat his special greeting to women. May I give you the first? about this New York bookshop in 1918. He lives with a woman that he calls the Ape of Fast. He has the shift of the Ape of Fast, which is quite hard to say for, but you don't have to think about it. Hello, which way to the evil incarnate section? Great, thanks a lot. Crowley entered a magic sect, the Order of the Golden Dawn, in 1898 when he was 23. After that, he took the message of Lucifer worldwide. He went to India and the Himalayas and California and Egypt, all the while refining the art of being a magician. He was a great poet and he was an artist and a good writer, but he never actually had a job as such. He used to get people to give him money simply by the force of his personality. He'd go up to women he didn't know and say, May I give you the serpent's kiss? And they would say, yeah. And they'd pick up their hands and sink his teeth into their wrists. And they'd go, whoa, do what thou wilt. It shall be the whole of the law with the famous phrase. He never actually did anything all that evil. He was a heroin addict and a blasphemer. He had a dog called Satan. And he famously took six spoons of sugar in his tea. His devoted American followers used to send him sugar and silk ties during the Second World War. And he was a womanizer and a manizer. Would get people under his spell and perform magic sex acts with them for days on end to try and increase cosmic consciousness. Crowley's most famous book was the Book of the Law, which he claimed was dictated to him by a spirit. It was basically sermonizing on behalf of darkness, which Crowley thought was lightness, Lucifer, the bringer of light. That was Crowley's appeal in the still Victorian time to romanticism, to the irrational, the deviant, and the extreme. Crowley's scare style was peculiar to him because he was very stylish, but his scare content anyone could choose now, just as a lifestyle option. Crowley really was a spiritual guy, but there's something anoraki about the cult of Crowley. I remember once I was in an off license in London and I laughed and the price came up on the cash register. 666, bing, the number of the beast. And then I groaned inwardly and the voice behind me piped up, Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. This is Alistair Crowley's magic stick, carved by himself. Decorated with faces of malignant intelligences. His stick's still here, and his spirit is still here. Crowley died in obscurity, but since his death in 1947 in the Hastings boarding house, he really has become what he always claimed he was a hell of a holy guru. <laughs> <laughs>